everyone. This is Aranya and welcome to this webinar on getting started with Litmus Kios 3.0, Kios Engineering Made Smarter. A bit, of, a bit of intro. So Amit and I are both senior software engineer at Harness and also we are uh, maintainers of Litmus Kios. And uh, we have been into uh, like contributing to Litmus uh, for uh, more than three years and it has been an incredible journey so far. So without any further ado, let's uh, get uh, get started. So in, in this webinar, we are mostly going to talk about uh, the uh, Litmus Chaos 3.0, what all features uh, it provides, and we'll do a brief comparison of uh, 1.x, 2.x, and 3.0. And uh, lastly, Amit is going to show uh, uh, all the features and uh, like uh, and give a brief demonstration of them. And uh, yeah. So that's that. And uh, without uh, any much delay, let's get started. So starting off with uh, introduction. So uh, a couple of months back, we have introduced Litmus Chaos 3.0. Uh, so the main idea behind it was uh, making the whole uh, Chaos experimentation process more uh, leaner, uh, easier, and developer friendly so that it can be used uh, not only by the SREs, but also uh, easily by the developers so that uh, Chaos Engineering can be adopted in all the stages of a software development life, life cycle. So with that, uh, let me uh, talk about, uh, introduce you to the uh, all the high level features that we have introduced in uh, 3.0. So starting off with uh, revamped user experience. Uh, so uh, uh, this is one of the major uh, improvement or enhancements and one of the highlights of the 3.0 that uh, like we have moved on from uh, material UI, uh, UI core library, uh, the component library to now we are using harness UI core library, which uh, provides a very uh, sleek and intuitive uh, user experience. And uh, it comes with a plethora of uh, <clears throat> components, which are... Uh, uh, very easy to use and support plug and play architecture. Uh, some of the features, uh, some of the um, <clears throat> major components such as Step Wizard and uh, and uh, Pipeline Studio have uh, not only made the visualization of Kios experiment easier, but have made the whole uh, user experience more uh, much better and uh, and and simpler. So yeah, <clears throat> that's that. Next, coming to uh, the other feature that is uh, environments for Kios infrastructure organization. So uh, managing Kios infrastructures, especially when different experiments are running in uh, in uh, in different uh, clusters or environments at at one at uh, like simultaneously, uh, it can be it can be difficult and uh, to manage all 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 those infrastructures. So uh, to address this situation, we have introduced uh, the concept of environments, which kind of acts as a uh, wrapper around the uh, infrastructures. That is like, uh, it kind of uh, streamlines the whole uh, man uh, managing of the Kios infrastructures. And uh, uh, an environment can be created uh, as pre-production type or production or production type and uh, uh, an infrastructure can be created within those environments and um, the whole uh, organization becomes very uh, simpler. So yeah, coming to the next feature that is uh, KO Studio. So uh, KO Studio is uh, one of the uh, highlight, is also one of the major uh, features that we have introduced in 3.0. So it uh, it makes the whole starting from the experiment creation to the uh, sh uh, scheduling or executing of chaos experimentation. So it it makes the whole process more simpler and uh, more intuitive. And uh, starting off with like uh, it, it you can like starting with uh, addition of uh, faults to the like tuning them and configuring each of the faults. Uh, it 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 uh, the whole process becomes very easy uh, with uh, like with the support of uh, visual um, visual experiment builder and and the uh, YAML editor that is built on top of Mona Monaco. Uh, it it enables the user to um, pre uh, to precisely configure their um, 
their experiments as per their requirements. So uh, one of the enhancements or more like a change that we have introduced in this whole process is uh, with the uh, resilience driven approach, we have made the addition of probe to each of the fault uh, mandatory and uh, it, it, it helps in calculating the resilience uh, probe or uh, resiliency of the application uh, in, a, in a much better way. So uh, similar to the uh, older flow, uh, uh, experiments can be scheduled as, as cron or, or non-cron experiment and uh, they can be uh, executed accordingly. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, that's that. And coming to the next feature that is resilience probes as uh, first class citizens. So uh, you, uh, the users might have known that uh, earlier in the in the older versions, the probes uh, if, when uh, they need to be added, they they were uh, the 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 configurations were added in the experiment manifest, and which which kind of was uh, a bit difficult because like uh, these these probes are not were not reusable, and uh, you have to add them every time for each fault. But uh, with uh, with the uh, introduction of uh, like probes as an entity, it uh, kind kind of uh, simplifies the whole procedure because uh, uh, you can create them once at one place, and it can be deployed uh, across multiple experiments and faults. It can be used multiple times, and uh, if you edit them uh, in the in the probe section. The, the the changes are reflected in the subsequent experiments that are being created uh, so it uh, kinds of uh, it kind of provides the uh, plug and play architecture here and um, uh, yeah and currently uh, litmus kio supports four kinds of probes that is http probe uh, command probe uh, prometheus and kubernetes probe so yeah and also you can get uh, the whole uh, like execution history and probe configuration like uh, what all uh, faults that have been referred uh, like reference this probe you can all uh, get the uh, you can get all these details via the uh, queue center uh, the the ui itself so yeah next uh, so other important features so these are some of the some of these features are actually uh like introduced as part of enhancement that were being suggested by the community itself and we have uh, uh we have given focus on we have focused on incorporating as much as them so starting off with uh, uh support for high availability of mongodb so the these uh, like as uh, like this was one of the uh, requirements from the community that uh uh, we can make the uh, like it, it this feature enables the uh, uh, deployment of mongodb as replica and uh, which in a, which ensures the high availability of the db and this can be installed via helm using bitnami mongo and next is the uh, terminology changes so we have done some uh, few we have changed a few terminologies to reflect their functionality better such as like the chaos agents or the delegates have now been renamed to chaos infrastructures. Uh, chaos uh, scenarios or workflows are now referenced as, uh, referred as chaos uh, experiments and chaos experiments are now referred as chaos faults. And uh, yeah, next coming to the API repactors and improved code architecture. So um, uh, in this release, we have uh, given a lot of focus on making uh, like making the api stable and and faster so we have done uh, many such refactors and also added a few uh, a, a few other uh, new apis to for the for the community to use and uh, with addition to that <coughs> sorry with addition to that uh, back in unit tests have also been added uh, in the uh, in the um, authentication and graphql server and uh, the code architecture has also been uh, enhanced uh, changed so that uh, ensuring that the developers can, developers or the new contributors can easily contribute to the uh, litmus kios ecosystem next coming up is uh, helm charts for kios infrastructures 
so uh, like uh, earlier uh, like setting up the execution plane was a very daunting task uh, but uh, with the introduction of helm charts for the infrastructures it has uh, simplified the whole flow next is the application level uh, chaos experiments for spring boot so with the latest release we have also um, uh, introduced uh, spring boot chaos experiments such as uh, covering uh, the areas such as latency uh, exceptions cpu or memory stress and uh, and application termination etc so application level uh, chaos experiments were one of the focus in th in this release as well and uh, next is the support for uh, sidecars in experiment pods so um, so uh, uh, the the community actually wanted to like uh, preserve the logs and uh, experiment logs so for that uh, one of the request was to enable the support for sidecars in the experiment pods um, primarily uh, the purpose was to forward the logs into custom uh, custom sinks so this support has also been added. So yeah, these were some of the high level features, but in the background, we have also added a lot of enhancements and in the upcoming releases as well, we are uh, uh, we are targeting a lot of, uh, like we are hoping a lot of new features will be coming in. Uh, we have a release cadence of uh, like monthly release cadence where um, we do releases every 15th of the month. So yeah, that's that. And yeah, lastly, like uh, for my from my side, this is like uh, the feature comparison between 1.x, 2.x and 3.0. So as you can see, uh, like most of the features, um, most of the features uh, I have already talked about. So these uh, these all features were added on top of the existing ones that is revamped and simplified UX and uh, environments introduction to the Kio Studio to simplify the whole Kios experimentation process and high availability of the MongoDB uh, resilience probes as first-class citizens and um, improved APIs, uh, improved debuggability and experiment stability. So along with that, some of the other features such as uh, like making the, uh, enhancing the Litmus SDK and, and, and uh, improving the Litmus CTL and um, the like a whole, uh, Litmus CTL is now following uh, now uh, uh, built on top of Prompt UI, which makes the whole uh, user experience uh, much better. So these are all uh, enhancement that we uh, that uh, 3.0 Litmus Kios 3.0 provides. But um, I one thing also uh, I want uh, the users to note here is like um, with with uh, a large number of features coming in with in this release, uh, backward compatibility is not supported. So uh, you you users will have to upgrade like uh, make a new um, uh, like upgrade to the three and make a new set, completely fresh setup uh to uh, to access all these so yeah that's all from my side now amit is uh, amit is going to give a demo and uh, like show all these all these features that i have talked about and uh, yeah over to you amit thanks aranya uh, thanks for uh, displaying all the new features that we have with uh, litmus 3.0 and how uh, we have uh, changed the uh, uh usage of chaos and uh, the curation of experiments from uh, litmus 2.0 to litmus 3.0 a lot of new features are there so now like we'll be uh, moving forward with the demo so in this demo like i'll be showing uh, uh, all the new features that we have with litmus 3.0 and uh, we have a, a demo setup which is running and we'll be uh, creating some chaos experiments and we'll be uh, playing with the chaos studio so let's get started so as you can see in my screen that this is the new UI of uh, uh, Chaos Center 3.0. And with Litmus 3.0, like we have a lot of new features that are uh, um, available now. So as mentioned by Saranya, like we have a new feature of environment, which actually helps us to like uh, differentiate or uh, create Chaos between multiple types of environment, like pre-production or production. And uh, we have uh, a resilience probe like earlier with litmus 2.0 we were having pros inbuilt in the uh, experiment manifest but like th this is completely a new feature now 
in which you can con configure your probes and you can use these pluggable checks in your experiments. And like we previously had the Kiosk Hub and uh, the major refactoring or major work that went in with Litmus 3.0 was the flow of experiment creation. So we have introduced Kiosk Studio, which actually allows user to, you know, create experiments with a very, very, very smooth flow. And yeah, so uh, before going to the demo or like before creating some experiments, I wanted to show the demo setup that we are running. So in this demo, we'll be uh, using an online hoodie app, which is basically an e-commerce app. So as you can see that uh, just like a normal e-commerce app, uh, it has got a lot of uh, uh, functionalities. Like this is the uh, product catalog service. And with that, we have some uh, currency generator service. Um, we have the checkout and cart service. And once we add a, a product to our cart, we can simply do a checkout or we can continue to do the shopping. And we have a payment service as well. So just like a normal e-commerce app, we have uh, a, a full-fledged functionality with this uh, demo application, which is online boutique. And to monitor all the uh, resource consumption or monitor all the networking uh, of this uh, app, we have set up a uh, Grafana dashboard where we are uh, checking all the uh, queries, all the uh, access duration of these uh, different services, which are yeah, so which are running as part of uh, uh, this boutique app. So we can see that a lot of services like ad service, ca uh, card service, checkout service, currency service, etc., are running uh, on this application. And to track all the metrics, we have this uh, Grafana dashboard, which is set up here. So let's start. Uh, let's start by creating an environment. So as as, as I mentioned uh, uh, before the start of this demo, like an environment is basically uh, a place where you can. Uh, like differentiate between uh, the clusters, like is it a pre-production cluster or is it a production cluster and where do you want to do the chaos? So I'll just give it a name, uh, test uh, demo, and let me keep it as pre-production. And I'll create a new chaos infra. So chaos infra is basically the execution plane from which will be, uh, which, which allows us to like perform all these experiments and faults and target different applications. So to start, like we'll, I'll have to enable Kiosk on one of our one, one of the namespaces. So let me just give it, give it a name, uh, demo uh, webinar. So uh, I'll be providing the cluster-wide access so we can we will be able to target a lot of applications. If you want to uh, uh, keep it uh, uh, restricted to a single namespace, you can also select a namespace scope. So for the demo, I'll be using the cluster uh, wide access and I'll be installing it in the Litmus namespace with the Litmus service account. So I'll just click next and I'll click download. So this will download this uh, this uh, uh, infra manifest. And once we apply this infra manifest, our uh, infra will be active and we'll be ready to uh, uh, target different applications from different namespaces. So I'll just copy this command of apply and click done. We can see that uh, chaos infra is enabled and it's, it's in pending state. So let me just go ahead and connect this uh, infra. So it is installing the execution plane or the chaos infra plane components. So it's installing different CRDs. Uh, different components like the sub subscriber and some uh, RBACs as well. So I think this should be done in a couple of minutes or seconds. Yeah. So the uh, manifest app applying the manifest uh, process is done. Let me just check if all the components are up and running. It must. Yeah, we can see that uh, the subscriber is up and running. So subscriber is basically uh, the execution plane component, which will allow us to uh, perform the chaos uh, experiments and perform all the chaos faults uh, on, on different uh, different applications. So we can see that uh, the chaos infra is enabled and it and it is connected, and we can uh, like we we can get started with create creating the experiments and. Uh, 
uh, and target uh, this uh, online boutique application. So let's go back to the Kiosk experiments page. And like, this is probably the best part of Litmus 3.0, the flow with which you can create experiments is very seamless now. So I'll start with uh, the experiment name. So I'll give it a name of uh, card service delete. And I'll select the demo webinar uh, kiosk infrastructure that I've just created. Click next. So uh, with kiosk studio, we get uh, three different types of options. Like uh, first we can create an experiment from scratch from a blank canvas or we can use the templates from the kiosk hub itself that is already uh, provided as part of the installation. And we can either uh, upload a YAML, uh, which is uh, completely user dependent. They can provide different spec, custom specs and provide different uh, uh, ENVs or uh, different values in the faults. And uh, this is completely user specific. So for, for the demo, I'll be uh, uh, creating an experiment from scratch. I'll use the blank canvas uh, option and yeah, so here, like uh, in Kiosk Studio, uh, we have uh, a vast variety of uh, uh, functionalities. First of all, is ad addition of uh, different faults from the hub. So we uh, we can see that uh, uh, the Kiosk hub consists of large variety of faults. And for this demo, like we'll be using the port delete fault. And once I'll add the port delete fault, I I I again I, I, I can easily tune these uh, tune the variables uh, or the environment variables of this fault. And we have a function functionality of YAML uh, editor as well. If you want to add some additional changes in the YAML, you can just come here, edit the YAML and tune the uh, experiment manifest as well. So yeah, let's go with the basic flow. I'll just click on this add button and I'll uh, select the spot delete. And once the spot delete is selected, I I'll be uh, shown up with this, uh, uh, this modal where we, we can select the application which we want to target. So, uh, I'll be targeting the uh, deployment in the boutique namespace uh, for the card service. So I've added this and to tune the fault, I can like uh, increase the kiosk duration. Let me increase the kiosk duration to 60 and the kiosk interval to uh, 20 seconds. And uh, the, these are some additional or optional uh, environments that uh, you can tune according to your needs and probes now coming to the probes like probes are uh, some additional checks that uh, we can add with our uh, fault execution so for this like will be uh, we have a boutique ui probe so which actually checks if uh, the online boutique application is available when the card service is down so this is basically an http probe we have uh, four different kind of kind of probes like http cmd ks and Prometheus probes. So each probe has its own functionality uh, depending upon the use cases. So for now, I will be uh, adding this probe and uh, I can decide when I want to run this probe. Uh, like we have several options like before the start of the uh, fault execution or end of the fault execution or edge. So in edge, it will start, uh, uh, it will start before the uh, experiment execution and uh, it will also uh, start uh, at the end of the experiment execution and we have two different uh, modes which are continuous and on chaos so for now i will uh, use the continuous uh, uh, mode and i'll apply the changes and to finalize the changes of uh, this fault i will just click apply changes and yeah so we have successfully added a fault in our experiment which will actually delete this card service and uh, once the experiment starts, we, we should be able to see uh, some, some uh, increase in latency or some changes in the uh, query per seconds. And it should be visible in the Grafana dashboards and it should also be visible in this uh, online boutique app. So let me just save this experiment. And once the experiment is saved, you can either run it from this Kiosk Studio or you can also uh, come back to this Kiosk experiment page and we have a run option here. So I'll just click run here and it should start the chaos experiment execution to validate the same. I can go back to my uh, terminal and I can just check uh, if the experiment has started. Yeah, so we can see that the card service experiment uh, uh, to delete the card service uh, to delete the card uh, service pod has started. Yeah, I can open a new terminal to check uh, the application is running in the boutique uh, namespace so get pods boutique 
yeah so we have the different services uh, running in the boutique namespace so let's let's wait for the port delete uh, experiment to start and we should we should see some uh, some action in the dashboards as well yeah yeah since the experiment has started we can see that the online boutique uh, uh, the application availability has gone down and if I go back to the page, I can see that this screen has popped up. It shows, oh, there's something has happened. One of the services down, the application is not resilient and uh, the whole application is down. And in, in, in the uh, Grafana dashboard, we can also see that the access duration of the frontend services has gone down. And similarly, the car service is also seeing a dip here. And the queries are increasing because uh, 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 queries, the bad queries are actually increasing in uh, number for all the different services which are uh, present in this uh, boutique uh, uh, namespace. So once the experiment uh, is completed, we should see that uh, this should come back to its original state. And uh, like, yeah, well, I think the experiment has completed. So we, we can see that the application av availability is coming back. We can see that uh, the access duration is coming back to normal. And if I can go back and okay, I have refreshed it. So yeah, the application is back online. So for for this time period, uh, uh for, for, for during the kiosk execution, the whole boutique application was down, which shows that this is not a resilient uh, application. So in case if uh, we might uh, uh, had uh, a few more replicas of uh, the card services, maybe the front end, uh, maybe the UI would wouldn't have uh, had crashed and it would have been resilient. So coming back to the screen, I can see that uh, my ex uh, experiment execution is completed, but we can see that uh, it has completed with some, some sort of fault because uh, the boutique UI was not available at all. Let me just go back. Yeah, so we can see that uh, the experiment execution has completed, but the probe was failing because the probe was actually checking if this uh, uh, boutique application is available or not if you are getting a 200 response code or not but uh, we actually got a 500 uh, response code which is a bad request so yeah so this 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 was the pluggable check that we added uh, on uh, on 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 this uh, uh, bot delete fault and to see the different properties that we have already configured uh, in the resilience probe section so yeah so the experiment execution has completed, but uh, uh, the result that we were expecting uh, was not uh, there because the probe has failed and the application is not resilient at all. To make the application resilient, we can we, we can uh, follow some countermeasures like we can increase the replica count of uh, uh, the card services and other services so that if one of the port get, uh, gets impacted, the whole application will not go down. So yeah. And to see the different uh, uh, stats, like we have this new flow, new flow of the UI where we can see all the uh, uh, experiment list. We can go here and create a, uh, a new experiment. Like for example, we can create a uh, let's say checkout service, uh, checkout service latency, and select a infra, and let's start from the scratch itself, and create a network latency fault to target the fault i can just go here select the namespace and this for the checkout service and select this and click apply and i'll add the probe uh, I, I i can use the same probe uh, here as well so these probes since they are like uh, a separate entity now they can be used anywhere in all all the ex all of our experiments so i can click apply and i can just save this so with the new flow, we can actually see all our experiments listed here. And with the experiments, we can also see the uh, recent 10 experiments. So I've executed this one. So it shows like uh, the experiment has uh, completely executed, but the scores is zero since the uh, uh, probe has failed. So yeah, this is the new UI. And apart from that, as Saranya mentioned, like we have the environments uh, functionality, which actually differentiates between a pre-prod environment and a prod environment and the uh, resilience probe uh, so th this is a completely separate uh, entity now we can create some new probes like http command prometheus and kubernetes probe and we can then use these probes in our experiment so uh, since we have used this uh, uh, probe in one of our experiments we can actually 
backtrack it and see that this particular fault has used this uh, uh, probe, which, which was the continuous probe that I have, uh, uh, continuous mode that I have provided. And the pro probe configurations are also visible here. So yeah, and we have the chaos hub. Chaos hub was an uh, essential part uh, since Litmus 2.0, where we had basically a marketplace of all the different faults. You can connect your own for, uh, own uh, chaos hub with uh, your own customized faults. And yeah, so as a uh, as an overview, like this is uh, what we have added uh, as part of uh, uh, as an overview. This is uh, what we have added as part of uh, Litmus 3.0 and. Um, yeah, I hope uh, you guys will uh, give it a shot and uh, please, please let us know how, how's the experience uh, with Litmus 3.0. Yeah, over to you, uh, Saranya. Uh, so thank you, Amit. The demo was really uh, awesome. And uh, with that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have a monthly release cadence of uh, release cadence that uh, every 15th of the month, <clears throat> we uh, make a release and we roll out new features and an enhancements and so with with the valuable with the valuable feedback from the community after the 3.0 uh here are some of the features uh, or the enhancements that we added in 3.1 so one of those uh, is uh, stopping of uh, chaos experiments so uh, when in 3.1 we uh, added a feature uh, that can uh, that can help user enable users to stop the ongoing experiments and so it is uh, uh, use uh, like uh, useful in case uh, of long running experiments which are kind of which have been stuck or pending for a running for a long time uh, users can stop them and uh, like this feature gives them more uh, flexibility and control over them so yeah and another one was uh, like another one is uh, enabling uh, like enabling users to toggle the uh, toggle the experiments from non cron to cron and vice versa so this is one of the this is also one of the features that uh, was suggested by the users uh, that, that was suggested by the uh, by the community uh, that uh, like uh, uh, while stopping the experiments or like in general uh, users can just uh, toggle the experiments like uh, to from cron to non cron or uh, like or the vice versa so this feature has also been uh, added along with the stop experiment feature so yeah and uh, other uh, uh, focus was also on enhancement and stability of the uh, chaos center so focusing in 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 in, uh, in addition to these features uh, the lfx mentees and other the community members have also added unit test in uh, both back end and in the front end as well so we have now uh, like add, uh, like front end uh, coverage has been also like is on track and we will soon be adding more unit tests to, to make the code base stable and uh, some uh, like um, uh, like coverage checks as also have uh, also been added as part of the pr uh, pr reviewing process so that uh, uh, any new contributor if if anyone wants to contribute they can like uh, like it it ensures the stability and uh, the quality of the product if we are adding this uh, check in the pr uh, pipeline process so that's that and other than that uh, we have like uh, uh, regular bug fixes and enhancement that are also going in along with uh, the uh, along with the other features so yeah that was uh, that was all uh, and in the upcoming releases we are also planning to add more and more features and uh, yeah that that's it and lastly i um lastly i just wanted to uh inform like i just wanted to uh let the community know that if if anyone uh if anyone interested in joining the community and get started with the chaos experimentation or wants to contribute to the litmus uh chaos they can join the uh litmus channel in the kubernetes slack and uh second uh secondly is the litmus 3.0 uh documentation so with the latest uh, release, we have also updated the documentation. So uh, 3.0 documentation can be found uh, found here. And uh, here you can like get all the details, uh, like all the um, all the uh, things that you need to know. 
in 3.0 and uh, uh, if we have the concept section which are brief which briefly describe all the uh, new features or the uh, or the enhancement that has been added that have been added and and there is the user guide section which will help uh, the community to get started with the starting from the installation to the uh, setting up the execution plane then uh, how to uh, inject uh, inject uh, schedule of fast chaos experiment inject false and uh, create resiliency probes so these all have been these are all uh, being covered in the documentation and we also have the troubleshooting section uh, where uh, if if any problems uh, face you can users can uh, definitely uh, check out this uh, the, the troubleshooting section or you can uh, or the users can uh, uh, like put uh, their uh, put the message in the uh, in the slack channel in the litmus channel so that uh, we can uh, we can help you get started and uh, yeah that is that and so with this i i hope you like this uh, like this session and uh, uh, yeah thank you thank you everybody